first we're going to cover the placement of your hand warmer which will work on e-bikes or regular bikes whether they be mountain or road bikes the obvious spot that you might think to put one would be these bar mitts have a pocket here and that could slide into the pocket and then when it's on your bike gravity should keep it down in the distal surface of the mitt however this ripstop nylon is coated I don't know if you can see that shiny part there in order to make it uh, water resistant and I say water resistant rather than waterproof because I assume these seams are all sewn through so water is going to have ingress there anyway so your other option is once this is on the handlebar you just slip this in and let some of your brake and shifter cables once this is tightened up it'll stay in that area now a third would be just to stick it in here and just let it in there loose so that when you place your hand in it kind of falls down under your handle grip and is under there where your brake lever and shifter paddles are and I'm thinking the place I'm gonna start is check out the velcro you have this liner the fleece liner in here and it's held in place with velcro so that you can pull it out and wash it this cuff then overlaps the velcro closure there's also velcro in here so what I'm going to try to start with is you open that velcro slide the hand warmer in there that'll help hold it in place the fleece liner then takes the same function as being the hand warmer carry case so you won't need this when you're putting it in there and then you can either have it now above your fingers by slipping it in here or you can slip it in on the lower part and have it under your fingers so you'll have to work with all those different options to see where the hand warmer is going to work best for you I don't have any suggestions at the moment because it's early season I'm also just starting with trying to tweak this project now if you're at an e-bike you probably have a USB output for charging your phone or running your satellite communication device or whatever else you may have and uh, if it's a single USB port then you're going to need a splitter if you want to run two of these heat pads so these heat pads I originally got them to put in gloves and boots and run them off a USB battery pack that has two amps of output for this again what I have found is you want to warm the blood in an artery and warm your arterial flow rather than venous blood flow therefore I prefer to have the heat on the bottom of my wrist I find that to be one of the most effective places in order to warm blood that's going to my fingers so I am going to open this pad this is the dorsal surface of the pad when it's on my bike so I'm going to put the pad into the anterior surface and I'm going to slide it right down there to the bottom now eventually when I've gone through all the options and see which works best for me I will pull this pad out I'll pull the liner out and I will either velcro or sew it 
right in to the mitt liner so it always stays in the same place. Again, I would recommend that you try it in a few different spots. Now, this is underneath your fingertips. Pretty much I can feel it in there. It should stay in place fairly well. And you just plug this into the controller on your bike. Now we'll go with an overview of how those mitts look when they're set up on the bike itself. So we're going to have a look at this setup on the e-bike. First we'll go over the placement of the mitt on the handlebars and I have left the electric heat pad in place to make it easier and I'm going to work this mitt over brake lever and my shift levers. just a regular bike. I could take my hand warmer and I can either just stick it right in and leave it down there and it floats around. However, it could fall out easily if all the conditions favored it. It didn't fall out there. but. I'm probably going to lift the Velcro and place it down into the bottom. Reseat the Velcro. Now if you also have the e-bike option then you may have this USB port that's available to you. Giant has a micro USB port on the side of the controller so what I've done in order to measure the draw of that pad is I've hooked it up to a power pack and then I'm measuring it with an inline USB measurement device. So I brought this uh, inside so I could get a better focus on the meter. This is one of those heating elements and this is what it's drawing right now and so you can see if you have this plugged in, you will be drawing a little less than one amp with that large pad. So you can factor that into how that may affect your battery life in the long haul.